Hello guys, this is Adit. Welcome to my channel Movement Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the thorax and the chest wall. We will be mostly focusing on the structure and in further videos, we will talk about the biomechanics of your movement at the chest wall that is basically ventilation. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram where I post pictures of all my notes and put out some MCQs. So let's get started. So today we are going to talk about the thorax and the chest wall and first we will look at the function the main function of your thorax and chest wall then we will move on to the different components of it and we'll see how each component is related to other and if one thing goes out of place the whole chest wall is affected so first starting with the function your thorax its main function is to protect the heart lung and the viscera all the internal organs Second, the thorax or the chest wall, it also helps in ventilation as the lungs are present right over here. And then it also provides a really good base for muscle attachments to the upper extremity. So if you see the muscle attachments coming from your clavicle, your scapula, your sternum, all these areas, they need to be very stable. So inherently your chest wall or your thorax needs to have a good amount of stability. But along with the stability, it also needs a good amount of mobility because it helps in ventilation, right? So the lungs have to expand and go back to its normal size. So during this process, the rib cage also has to move in and out to create that space, right? So that's why the thorax needs mobility as well as stability. Now. Coming to the components of your thorax or the chest wall, it has three main components that is the sternum, you can see over here, ribs that go around and posteriorly you have the vertebras, thoracic vertebras. So those are the three main components and together they form a closed chain, right? So they start over here and form a closed chain, nothing is open over here. So because of that, all the three components are dependent on each other. Coming to the first component that is sternum, sternum can be divided into manubrium, body and xiphoid process. This you can see over here is the manubrium, this is the body and this is the xiphoid process. Manubrium and body posteriorly or dorsally they are concave whereas the xiphoid process as you can see it starts over here it is angled dorsally and downward from your body and the manubrium. So that is your sternum. Now let's move on to the ribs. Ribs, you can divide them into three types. There is true ribs, false ribs and floating ribs. So total of 12 out of which ribs 1 to 7 are true ribs because they come from the thoracic spine and directly attach to your sternum through this cartilaginous structure over here, right? So first 1 to 7 directly articulate with the sternum through the cartilaginous articulation and that's why they are called as the true ribs whereas rib 8 to 10 they do not directly attach to the sternum they indirectly attach so as i mentioned here the ribs 8 to 10 they indirectly articulate through the superior ribs as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 these are direct and then these three you can see they come and indirectly come and attach through the superior ribs to the sternum that's why they are called as the false ribs and then the last two ribs you can see over here they do not attach to the sternum at all right so they are called as the floating rib that is rib 11 to 12 so this so this is the simple breakdown of the ribs at your thorax next moving on to the third component that is the vertebrae there are 12 thoracic vertebrae and these vertebrae they articulate with your ribs so these articulations are called as the coastal facets or also the demi facets. So basically there are total of six coastal articulating surfaces. Four of them are on the body as you can see in the picture. And then there are two on the transverse process. So basically two two on each side on the body and one on each side on the transverse process. So total four plus two is six coastal articulation. And that's how your thoracic vertebra articulates with your rib 
we will talk about the detailed articulation in the future videos but for now this is just the introduction now important thing to remember over here is all these structures are interlinked right the sternum is connected to the ribs the ribs is connected to the thoracic vertebra and again the thoracic vertebra is connected to ribs so forming this whole all closed chain if there is something that goes wrong in the structure the whole rib cage is kind of affected for example if you take example of scoliosis say right scoliosis what happens in the right scoliosis there will be curvature on the right side okay so if you take this as the right and this is the left there will be curvature on the right side that means lateral flexion on the left side correct so when this happens when there is lateral flexion of the thoracic vertebra the thoracic vertebral body will rotate to the right side and the spinous process will move to the left side okay because there is rotation that is happening now with this rotation if you can imagine the body rotating to the right side this transfers process which is there which will come behind right it will move posteriorly and along with that it will also bring the ribs behind so the ribs will move posteriorly and it will create something called as the rib hump and because of this structural deformity the person can find difficulty in ventilation so as i mentioned here the thoracic vertebra was affected but because it was affected and it is connected to your ribs the ribs also start moving and the whole rib cage gets affected and affects the function of ventilation so this is how all the three aspects are interlinked and it's very important that each and every structure over here the vertebra the rib and the sternum plays its role properly so that's all we have for this video where we cover the structure and how they are in closed chain in next video we will talk about the articulation that happens at all these joints so stay tuned for that and thank you for watching